The HD Zero Nano Lite is the smallest and lightest digital FPV camera in existence. Today, we're going to put this tiny camera under the magnifying glass. We're going to see how it stacks up against the other HD Zero cameras and whether it's the right choice for your next build. We'll be looking at the physical design, image characteristics, and the overall value. Let's take a closer look at it and see what we can learn. The HD Zero Nano Lite weighs in at just under 1.7 grams and it has the same 14 by 16 millimeter mounting dimensions as the other HD Zero Nano cameras. One difference here is that it uses smaller mounting screws than most FPV cameras. The screw holes on this one are M1.4 rather than the M2 screws we're used to seeing. So you'll need to make sure you use the included screws to mount the camera or use something like a 3D printed mount that uses friction to hold the camera in place. It's immediately apparent that the Nano Light uses a smaller lens than most other cameras, and that's gonna come up again soon when we look at the performance of the camera. I'm not exactly sure what size lens this is, and it doesn't seem to be a standard size, but it is very small. Of course, this does help keep the weight down, and it also makes the camera very compact, so it's easy to fit into even the smallest drones. But even though the Nano Light is this small, it still manages to fit the same V2 image sensor that we've seen on the HD Zero Micro V2 and Nano V2. This is a really impressive sensor that has shown excellent performance in colors and dynamic range on those previous cameras, so I couldn't wait to see how it would perform in this smaller version. That sensor and image processor also give us access to many of the same settings that we've seen on the previous HD Zero cameras. With the Nano Lite, I highly recommend configuring your settings the way you see here. This camera in particular benefits from changing these settings, and you'll see a much better image from the camera as a result. But let's dig into the performance of the Nano Lite so you can judge the image quality for yourself. Because this camera is targeted toward whoops, I wanted to make sure I showed you some indoor flying, so let's start there. When you're flying indoors, you want to see good low light performance and you also want to see dynamic range in the shadows so you can avoid obstacles in darker areas. Generally, I found the Nano Lite to perform really well indoors and it gives me plenty of confidence to navigate around obstacles. Compared to an analog camera, it's really no contest. I find that I get a lot of noise on analog cameras indoors and the resolution of those cameras is noticeably lower than the Nano Lite. Not only do I find it easier to see where I'm going with the Nano Lite, but it's just more fun and I enjoy being able to see my surroundings better as I fly. If you want to see more indoor flying and more of my thoughts on this, I covered those aspects of the Nano Lite in a lot more detail in two of my previous reviews, so check down in the description for links to those. If we take the camera outdoors, we continue to see generally good performance. Because the Nano Lite uses the V2 sensor, it has the same great colors as the HD Zero Micro V2 and Nano V2. I find that the sharpness and detail isn't quite as good as those larger cameras, but it's still decent and it's much better than what you'd see on an analog camera of this size. Overall, both indoors and out, I'm happy with the image I get from the Nano Lite and it feels well worth it to me as an upgrade from an analog loop camera. This camera is more fun to fly with and you'll probably find that you can see obstacles more easily and have more confidence in your flying. It's really an impressive result for such a small and lightweight camera. And so you might be wondering, why not use this camera on every build? What's the downside? And as it turns out, there are a couple of trade-offs with the Nano Lite. There are two that aren't that big of a deal and one that bothers me a bit more. The first is that the image from this camera is generally a bit more hazy and less defined than the other HD Zero cameras. This is part of why I really recommend you turn up the saturation and contrast in the settings. The lens on this camera seems to be just not quite as clear as the larger cameras and it's just kind of a general negative effect on the image. Now like I said, I still think this camera has a good image, but especially in areas with uneven lighting, you'll notice more haze and less sharpness on this camera compared to the other HD Zero options. Next, we've got night performance. Now, I'll say I've always been impressed with the performance of HD Zero cameras at night. I've never really had one that I felt was unflyable at night, and the Nano Light is no exception. If you have some light where you're flying, you're going to be able to see where you're going. So I wouldn't be worried about using this in a night race or anything like that. But if we compare it against a camera like the HD Zero Nano V2, you'll see that this camera just doesn't perform as well. It's not as sharp and the colors are more muted. It's totally flyable, but I definitely don't enjoy flying with this camera at night as much as I do with the other cameras. 
And finally, I wanna talk about how this camera handles bright highlights or glare. I find that this comes up a lot if you're flying at sunrise or sunset and you get the sun in your field of view. In this situation, a good camera will show that bright spot, but it won't overwhelm the image and you'll still be able to clearly see darker areas. But the Nano Lite is not a good camera in this situation. I found that it has a really hard time handling this type of glare and I was more or less flying blind until I got the sun out of my line of sight. If we compare it to the HD Zero Nano V2, you can see a stark difference in performance. The Nano V2 handles this situation much better and I can easily see where I'm going. In my opinion, this is probably the biggest downside to the Nano Lite and it's the biggest thing that might affect your ability to fly with this camera. I think with this issue and with all of the shortcomings I mentioned, it's just a side effect of that smaller lens. The camera can't get as much light into the sensor and any spot of glare is covering a large enough portion of the lens to cause a problem in most of the image. I also wanted to show you a few quick field of view comparisons, although I'm not going to go into much detail on this. The Nano Lite supports both 4x3 and 16x9 aspect ratio modes with the 4x3 mode providing a greater vertical field of view. In comparison to the other HD Zero cameras, the field of view on the Nano Lite is a bit lower both vertically and horizontally. I did notice that the image is mostly rectilinear and has less fisheye distortion than the Nano V2, so I don't have any concerns there. And by the way, don't put too much stock in the color differences in these particular comparisons. It's just a field of view comparison. The Nano Lite also supports the new 16x9 full aspect ratio, which uses the entire sensor area to give you the widest possible field of view. You still get heavy vignetting in this mode, just like you do on the other cameras, but it's an interesting option. So considering all of that, the only thing we have left to talk about is whether you should use the Nano Lite. This is probably the most conflicted HD Zero camera review I've done because I think the camera performs amazingly well for how small it is, but it also has some clear shortcomings compared to the other HD Zero cameras. I think the reality is that the Nano Lite is a tool for a specific job rather than a camera that can do everything. If you're building a Whoop or a Micro where every gram of weight matters, this camera is gonna give you unbeatable performance for its weight. There are tangible benefits over analog cameras and it's light enough to make HD Zero a viable option for these smaller drones. I'm really happy this camera exists and I know it's made me more interested in 1S Whoops now that I can fly them with digital FPV. This opens up some really cool options. But if weight doesn't matter as much to you and you're just looking for the best nano camera, I think you're better off with the HD Zero Nano V2. The Nano Lite just can't compete with the image quality, dynamic range, and overall performance of that camera, and I think it's a better all-around choice for larger builds. But I'm giving you all this information so you can decide what you think of the HD Zero Nano Lite, and I hope you found this review helpful. I also wanted to mention that I have a written version of this review on my website, so if you'd prefer to read the review and study those comparisons more closely, check down in the description for a link to that. I'd also love for you to leave a comment below with what you think of the camera, and don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.